Okay, so today we will uh, again discuss the feed additives and the leftover part uh, I will finish today. So in continuation of previous class, today I will uh, discuss about the different arsenicals which is also used as feed additive especially in case of non-ruminant. So, the example of arsenical compound uh, that is arsenic acid, sodium arsenalate and 3 nitro arsenic acid. So, these are the three best examples of arsenicals which is being used as a feed additives that actually that arsenical compound inhibit the growth of the pathogenic organism or reduce the multiplication of that pathogenic microbes in the system and by that way they can restore the condition for recovering the animals by the infections so these compounds are uh, very less retained in the body and uh, but it has some uh, uh, that uh, they can be deposited in the system and it has some residual effect in the system so after uh, discontinuation of this uh, arsenical compound in the feed uh, we have to leave uh, the animal and we can slaughter the animal at least after five days of the use of the arsenicals and the dose of the arsenical which is recommended in the diet per ton of the feed is 50 to 70 grams it is at the rate of 50 to 70 grams per ton of feed is recommended for the use of arsenical compounds next to arsenical is the buffering compounds Actually, buffering compound is very much used in the ruminant feeding system and uh, to maintain the pH of the rumen. And especially in the case of those animals, then we provide large quantity of the concentrate feed. So under such condition, we have to use buffer to neutralize the pH or to maintain the pH of the rumen because pH is very much important for the health of the animal as well as the production, maintain the production efficiency of the animal. So, cooking compound can be used to neutralize the pH or to it all acts as alkalizing agent. So, improve the pH of the uh, GI tract. So, buffer are a mixture of weak acid and their conjugate bases. And uh, when it is present in aqueous solution, the buffer should resist change in pH. And uh, buffer uh, which modify, it also manipulate the rumen fermentation. That means when you use the buffer, they modify the rumen fermentation pattern as well. So they, they increasing the resisting change in the rumen pH and increase the functional outflow rate of the Reticulo, omicel orifices, whatever the rumen dilution rate. So it also increases the flow rate of the rumen cleave. And uh, increase in fluid dilution rate, and by that way, they increase the osmolality and uh, increase both water intake and influx through the ruminal wall. So by that way, the buffer can improve the uh, efficiency of the feed utilization and uh, you can say that uh, nutrient utilization can be improved by application of the buffer but it depends on the types of the diet what kind of the diet we can offer to the animals so generally uh, the, the example of the buffer what uh, we are using and uh, that is the sodium bicarbonate and magnesium oxide this is the popular name of the two popular salt of the buffer which is widely used in the ruminant diet 
especially in case of the dairy animals. So in this buffer also reduce the acetate propionate ratio by inducing the low roughage and high grain diet. So under such condition, it is, uh, the production efficiency will be maintained uh, by application of sodium bicarbonate and magnesium oxide in dairy animals. The supplementation rate of uh, that sodium bicarbonate, and that is one salt, and uh, uh, we can supplement at the rate of 0.6 to 0.8 percent in TMR, that is total mixed ration. We can use this dosage, this percentage. However, in case of concentrate mixture, when prepare concentrate mixture, then we should add at least 1.2 to 1.6 percent of sodium bicarbonate while preparing the concentrate mixture. So TMR, the dose is 0.6 to 0.8 percent. However, in case of concentrate mixture, dose is 0.2 to 1.6 percent. Like that, uh, sodium bicarbonate, magnesium oxide. So dose of magnesium oxide is different. Magnesium oxide should be added at the rate of 0.2 to 0.4 percent of total mixed or total mixed diet. However, in case of concentrate mixture, you can use magnesium oxide at the rate of 0.4 to 0.6 percent. So this is the two important dosage of this buffer. You should remember it. This and when using both sodium bicarbonate and magnesium oxide in combination, then two to three parts sodium bicarbonate and mixed with one part magnesium oxide. So ratio is two to three is to one. So in the, this ratio we can use in combination of both sides. But one problem is the application of that buffer. When uh, feeding large amount of these salts, they can decrease the pH because they can enhance the rumen pH, and by that way, in enhancement of the pH, they decrease the feed intake by because uh, the rumen microflora will also change in the system in the rumen. So we should not go above the dose level. Dose level and we should only use thus this buffer in a discontinuation process we can discontinue sometimes and then we can use but it totally depends on the type of the roughage and concentrate ratio how much roughage and how much concentrate is to be fit to the animals next to buffer uh, that is the antioxidants this is also very much important for animal feeding our is a good source of additives which is being used for feeding to the animal non ruminant as well as ruminant so antioxidant which are the chemical compound that have the capacity of preventing oxidation of the nutrient or oxidation of the substance so they prevent the auto oxidation as well so high fat vegetable, high vegetable fats, uh, at tallow, lard, fish meal, and poultry byproduct meal, they are more prone to oxidative density. So when fat present in the diet, so there may be the chance of excess fat present in the diet, then there may be the chance of auto-oxidation. So auto oxidation when takes place, then the smell of the feed is being changed and rancidity may start. So by application of this antioxidant, we can reduce or we can increase the shelf life of the feed. And when cause rancidity due to oxidation of that uh, fat molecules, then the off flavor is uh, one. Uh, when they, the feed may be off level, the palatability of feed will be reduced. Voluntary feed intake will be reduced. Viability of the amino acid, fat soluble vitamin, they reduces or decrease. So ultimately the feed intake will be reduced and nutrient utilization of that particular feed will be decreased. The best source of or best example of that antioxidants are, you have to remember this, 
butylated hydroxyanisole that is in short form BHA, butylated hydroxytoluene that is BHT, and ethoxyquin. These three are the three are the synthetic antioxidant BHA, BHT, and ethoxyquin. However, some natural antioxidant which includes vitamin E, vitamin C, rosemary. So these three are the best source of best example of the natural antioxidant which is present in the feedstuffs. And the dose of this uh, antioxidant which added to the free gradient and vitamin mix at the rate of 1. Uh, 125 to 200 grams per day. So this is the dose, dose rate of antioxidant and uh, synthetic antioxidant which is comparatively cheaper I mean, that means uh, uh, ex less expensive than and long long lasting also so nowadays synthetic and antioxidant is a application of synthetic antioxidant as a feed additive is very much popular in the feed industry and they are using white, uh, different uh, level in the diet while formulating the process Next to antioxidant, that is the enzymes. So enzymes, there are different enzymes, have a degrading enzymes, uh, that is the fibrolytic enzymes, such as cellulose, phytase, gelanase, beta-glucanase. So these are the best uh, example of these fibrolytic enzymes. And these enzymes improve the utilization of the fiber-rich diet. The nutrient availability will be more and we can use <coughs> enzymes. Uh, in the feed, the rasa. So they enhance the availability of that nutrient and uh, eliminate the toxic effect of the feed in case of non room meat, especially. When we use the phytase, they enhance the availability of the phosphorus from the uh, feed. And like that, cellulase, gelanase, we can improve the fiber digestibility of that particular feed. So in case of ruminant, the rumen microbes, this is the main source of the enzyme producing. They produce different enzymes, different microbes produce different enzymes. Like uh, uh, fiber degrading bacteria produce fibrolytic enzymes, protein, uh, protea, proteolytic bacteria produce protease. So like that, uh, the it produces different kind of the enzymes. Fungi produce different kind of the enzymes. So it depends on the population and, uh, and the number of the microbes, which kind of the microbes present in the gastrointestinal tract of the animal. Exogenous polysaccharide, which uh, a polysaccharide degrading enzymes, which are stable in the room. So exogenous polysaccharide degrading enzyme is stable in the rumen and which they pass to the lower tract. Hence, it can improve the nutrient utilization by the animal. So, and it is uh, also important to say that the enzymes, which is substantially improve the feed digestibility. Because uh, the substrate, uh, enzymes require substrate, and uh, substrate is available, so they can uh, improve the digestibility of that substrate. And by improving the digestibility of the feed, the performance of the animal may enhance. So by that way, the enzymes work in the system. And this is the, you should remember the name of the different enzymes, cellulose, phytase, gelanase, and beta gluconase. So these are the, these enzymes are being used as feed additives for animal type. Next to feed additive uh, enzymes, and that is the hormone. Hormone uh, actually generally banned in different countries because they have some residual effect, they have some negative effect, and uh, withdrawal period is very high. And they have the residue of hormone is being deposited in the muscle. Like when consume the meat of the animals, then hormone may come to the body of the human animal, and they. So in several countries they banned the hormones, and they are not using 
in the diet of the animals. But uh, we have to know about that, uh, how hormones uh, also use in the field of the animal. That hormone, which are uh, substances and uh, produced by the endocrine glands and uh, activate the target organ, specifically target organ, and uh, to produce the desired results. So, synthesize the hormone synthesized uh, compounds, they have a similar response as a naturally produced hormone and can be used as feed additive to promote the growth of the animals. So, by promoting the growth of the animal, this hormone can be used as a feed additive and uh, they used to bring the desirable changes in the rate of metabolism or effective or for increase the efficiency of the uh, nutrients and by that way they can increase the productivity of the animals. So basically there are two types of hormone, anabolic hormone and catabolic hormone. So here you can see that the example of anabolic hormone, that anabolic hormone, the example is what it does actually, that anabolic hormone, uh, they increase the animal productivity either through growth, egg production, and milk production. So they can increase the productivity of the animal and the best uh, example of anabolic hormone is bovine somatotropin. So BST, generally bovine somatotropin, short name is BST, they increase the milk production in dairy animals and uh, hydrogenated casein, they increase the egg production in poultry birds. So by the application of these two product, these two anabolic products, we can improve the production of the dairy animal as well as the poultry as well. And here you can see that the uh, catabolic uh, hormones, that is estrogen and glucocorticoids. They also increase the muscle development and bone formation as well. And uh, the use of hormones, which has, as I have discussed, the application on and use of hormone is a public concern due to residue present in the animal product and that animal product is being consumed by the human being. So the residual effect is uh, very much important in, and health concern of the human being. So there are several countries, they have banned the hormonal preparation as a period. Next to hormone, uh, that is the adsorbent. That means they are not absorbed in the system. And uh, adsorbent is the compound which are not absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract, but they have the ability to bind physically with the toxic substances in the GI tract. And by binding with the toxic substances, they prevent the absorption of that particular toxin in the system. So adsorbent is very much used and widely used in the feed, used by the feed industry to improve the quality of the feed and reduce the toxic substances in the feed. So the best known adsorbent is the activated charcoal and silicates, different silicates uh, and activated charcoal is the common uh, additives and common absor adsorbent which is used in the livestock feed manufacture uh, and uh, they generally the livestock when exposed to the dietary aflatoxin these activated charcoal and uh, silicates which reduces the chance of the toxin production in that particular infested diet and the dose level of the activated charcoal which is, uh, which can be administered uh, at the rate of 20 to 120 milligram per kg to the domestic animal. And several substances like aluminosilicate, you have to remember the name of this adsorbent is aluminosilicates, bentonite, silicon, geolites. Uh, these are the common source of the adsorbent, which is widely used in the Heat by the feed manufacturer, which can reduce the toxic effect of uh, uh, 
different uh, toxin uh, which is present in the uh, ingredients and present in the diet. So by that way, we can reduce the chances of the toxicity of the animal and they have beneficial effect. Next to adjournment uh, that uh, organic acid. So organic acid, which uh, the example of the best organic acid, which is being used in the feed and in the ration of the animal is citrate, citric acid, formic acid, malic acid, fumaric acid. So these four organic acids are widely used in the diet of the animal as a feed additives. Actually, this organic acid also reduces the chances of the uh, in, in different uh, microbes uh, uh, and reduce the chances of the infestation of the food, microbial infestation of the feed. And uh, by that way, they improve the shelf life of the feed as well and improve the performance and utilization of the nutrient of particular feed. Like my lead, uh, which I simulate the lactate utilization by these uh, particular microbes, Selenomon Selenomonas ruminensium, that uh, improve uh, the efficiency of that uh, lactate utilizing bacteria by application of the mild. Like that, different uh, uh, organic acid also improve the utilization of the feed and reduce the chances of the infection in the animals. After uh, organic acid uh, and that uh, flavoring agent and pigments, these uh, two additives are also widely used in uh, ruminant as well as the non-ruminant uh, diet. And flavoring agent generally what it does, it improves the palatability of the feed. So once palatability of the feed and acceptability of the feed and by the animal is improved, then the nutrient utilization will definitely improve. And so flavoring agent improve the, enhance the palatability of the feed. And uh, like sweet flavor, so once a sweet flavor added in the diet, so generally improve the, the palatability, improve the acceptability of that particular feed. So different kind of the flavor which is available in the market and the application of the flavor depends on the type of and the species of the animal or particular feed. Like flavoring agent pigment, which is a compound uh, that are used to satisfy the consumer grievance. That means uh, visibility of the feed may improve by the application of different pigments. So they satisfy generally satisfy the consumer. So xanthophyll generally, which is present in the yellow mage and lucerne meal, which are used to produce deep yellow pigmentation in body, like sank area of the bird as well as the egg yolk. So when we use xanthophyll or when we use the uh, ingredient which contains more amount of the xanthophyll in the diet, then the sank region and the deep yellow pigmentation may improve the consumer preference and yolk egg is also yellowish color. So they satisfy the consumer preference by application of that pigment in the diet or pigment rich ingredient in the diet. So by that way, we can improve the uh, price of uh, the product also by application of that pigment. So this is all about the additives and uh, here we can close my lecture. And in next class, we come with uh, next uh, left over the topic. So thank you very much. Thank you for attending the class.